We're here with Gregory James Connor of the Crow Wings. Welcome. Um, I noticed behind you, you have um, one of your latest um, artworks, because I know that you not only do music, but you also are very creative in other veins as well. So tell us about your art. Uh, well, this one is my latest one. Um, it doesn't really have a title. I don't really title them anything. and um, I don't know. Um, when I look at it, I see a guy that's very termin determined to go somewhere. Um, he's pushing a cart, you know. Um, to me, it's like he's going to his home, which is this big city, and it's um, dirty and yucky, but he loves it. Um, as far as the open cart, um, I don't know. When I, when I look at it, it, it sort of looks like... Um, an open conscience about uh, having uh, nothing on, on his back. He can start all, He can start fresh in his city, in this city or the place that he wants to be. Um, there's nothing weighing on his conscience. He's uh, got a clear, empty conscience, which, which is a good, you know, thing to have. And he looks very de determined. So, I don't know. so what? Um type of style would you describe your art? Um, I guess um, abstract, you know, I, I, it doesn't really make sense, you know. I love not making sense with my art, in fact that's why I do it, so it doesn't make sense, you know. I mean, life is so full of rules that it's fun to break the rules sometimes and I can do that with art. You know, and uh, I, um, I I dug painters like Picasso and you know Matisse with his childlike colors and innocence. And um, it seems like the older Matisse got, uh, the more innocent and um, simplified his stuff was. And to the point, before he died, he was just cutting out. Um, sh these pieces of colored paper in different shapes and putting it on a collage. He wasn't even painting anymore, he was just cutting them out. Um, just like a child would do. I dig that. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to do my own thing and uh, not really be too influenced by anybody else. And that's kind of difficult not to be influenced by your influences sometimes, you know. So when did you realize that you had um, not only the musical talent uh, in that creative vein, but your artistic talent as well? When did that start developing <clears throat> for you? Um, drawing came way before music did. I would sit around as a kid and doodle and, you know, just draw cartoons and Conan the Barbarian and um, a comic book. I would ch I wouldn't trace, I would just look at the picture and recreate it and learn how to draw people and comic book, you know, figures and um, and then I would um, take my schoolwork uh, when I was young and flip it over immediately when the teacher would hand it out and start drawing whatever, you know, a lot of times it'd be guitars, I'd be designing my own guitars or my own stage plot for when I had a band, you know, when I I was still just dreaming of playing music back then. And so, you know, um, I've always done art. It wasn't until recently that I started painting with oil paints a couple years ago. So what are your favorite mediums then um, to work with when you're creating your, your pieces? Right now, it's oil paints. Um, mainly, and I like painting huge paintings. I can't really... I'm not really into painting these small little things because I have these, you know, big gorilla freaking hands that hey, I can't, you know, handle these little things. I have to paint large, you know, and um, I, I paint very, very quickly, you know, like everything just sort of spits out at once, um, and uh, nothing really gets labored over. Because I noticed that you have a lot of different textures, a lot of different colors in your work. So, what types of are there any particular types of oils, or do you are you mixing oils with other types of 
of things in your pieces? Uh, yeah. Um, I mix oil and um, house paint and whatever is around, you know, at the moment. Um, and uh, crayons or whatever I can get my hands on. Dirt, um, you know, but, you know, basically, uh, like this one, it's got a little bit of everything going on in there. Um, a little bit of house paint and a little bit of uh, acrylic paint and then a little bit of oil on top of all that. And then I'll just like scratch, do scratches for the detail, you know. And then I'll scratch right down to the canvas and give you a nice bright lines. And it's just, you know, a little abstract. Like I said, I, I, I hate rules in painting, so. Um, I like breaking them. It would be my style. The rule breaking style. <laughs> so, where have you gotten your uh, art out into the world then? Where have you had some showings? Well, strangely enough, um, in a public library in uh, Minnesota, uh, this little small town um, took 18 of my pieces and showcased them. And so that was a cool little town called Brainerd, Minnesota in USA <laughs> um, <clears throat> and that was cool um, and then uh, there was a coffee shop right down the road that got excited about the art and wanted some pieces in their coffee shop in this little town so oddly enough in the middle of nowhere they you know displayed my art for like you know a quarter of a year that was cool and then uh, a coffee shop um, in Minneapolis called Vicinity, um, right on Lindale Avenue in Uptown area of Minneapolis. And that was pretty cool. Um, so they got to go out and be viewed by the world. Excellent. Yeah. So what other types of um, art have you dabbled in or, or work with creatively? Any visual arts or anything you else? Beside the black you arts? Yes. Um, uh, well, I, I, um, do a little bit, <laughs> I do a little black bit Black magic, but yeah, what else? A little bit of black magic. No, um, I've tried, um, I've tried working with, like, um, sculpture and stuff, but, uh, I don't know, that takes a long time. With painting, I could just slap it on really quickly and, mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of like, um, this big release and it's exciting I never really know what I'm gonna wind up with when I start painting mm -hmm. it just sort of uh, ha happens on its own you know um, I just let the painting guide what I'm gonna do instead of vice versa I, I try not to think about it too much mm -hmm. um, any other visual arts things like um Movie making, photography, any of that other stuff that you've dabbled in? Yeah, you know, I do photography as well. Um, and I, in fact, went to school briefly for it until they kicked me out because I couldn't come up with the, um, with, with the money to continue classes. And so, you know, I got um, some free information there. Um, and then I just sort of done it on my own um, freelance. And then, um, then I lost my camera in a tragic way. A, a client left it on the top of his car and we drove off. And, and that was the end of my photography days. And uh, I just had to get a job at Glamour Shots, you know. I mean, <laughs> How was that for you? Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't mind the, the picture taking, but when they made you try to sell these packages and upsell to the customers, I was just mm. horrible at it. I mean, I just... Um, they wanted you to lie, cheat, and steal to upgrade to these package, packages, and I I just was uh, a horrible salesman. So working for the man on commission. Yeah, I didn't do well. I, I was like at the bottom of the, of the totem pole, you know. I, I made the best pictures, but I was at the bottom, you know. I mean, and everyone, you know, sort of worked on everyone's scale, like, uh, and so I brought everybody's sort of quota down, you know. <laughs> it didn't last very long there. Yeah. So how about um, film? Dabbled in film at all? Yeah, for a while I was making these little short films, 
um, uh, doing all the shooting myself. I would just set up the camera and then I would edit the films myself and um, put soundtracks to them and just have fun with it. You know, um, I made a few and they're on my YouTube channel under a cat Jackson. <laughs> Tell me about a uh, cat Jackson. Who well, is that guy? Where did he come from? <laughs> cat Jackson was a name that um, when I was 16, my bandmates and myself thought, oh, you know, if we're going to be rich and famous, we have to have a cool rock star name. So we each went home after practice and made up these stupid little silly names that a 16 year old at the time thought would be cool. And uh, uh, and it just sort of stuck around all this time. And, um, you know, at this point, I don't really feel the need to use it anymore. It just feels a bit silly because, I mean, um, you know, with my music and art, I try to be honest to myself and to the art or the songs. And so how can I really justify being an honest artist with this silly little moniker name that, you know, uh, I, tr I came up with when I was 16, which it just doesn't fit me anymore. So recently I, I just dropped it and went with my birth name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty boring, but who cares these days, you know? Right. So it sounds like a new phase and a new chapter. So when, yeah. in your Cat Jackson days, what type of stuff did you do? Because you've been in the biz for 30 plus years. So. Yeah, well, I used to do um, uh, original music. I started out doing that, played in the band called Morticia for a while, and then um, um, some of my own original things. And then uh, I started playing in these uh, Motley Crue tribute bands all around the country and making money doing that. Kiss tribute bands, you know, with the costume and the fire and the blood. I was Gene Simmons and, and that. And, you know, it's a cool way to make a living. But now I'm just concentrating on the Crow Wings um, original music. Right, so tell us about this new project then tell us about the crow wings and the transition from your um hair metal days and playing that genre um moving now with your new project kind of describe um how would you characterize this project um what you guys do uh well the band is um all original it's basically a partnership between jessica horman and myself and um, we have a saxophone player, Izzy Armstrong, and then uh, we're just now picking up a bass player and a, a, a drummer to fill out the sound, you know. And I recorded the bass and drums myself on our debut album. Um, and um, yeah, so we're just going to be doing shows under the Crow Wings name for the rest of 2017 and 2018. And uh, let's bring uh, the music out to the people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just, you released a new CD. Uh, how many um, songs are on that CD? And, and what type of things for, for new fans that haven't heard you before, um, what can they kind of expect? It's, um, it's our debut uh, album. And we pressed it on CD, and it's going to go on vinyl um, eventually. Um, mm -hmm. And then it'll be available for download and, and all that kind of fun stuff. Right. And, uh, and that kind of makes sense, because you're a big vinyl guy, correct? Yeah, well, I love and collect vinyl, so that's the, the, the one that I'm waiting for, mm -hmm. so I can play it on the record player, you know. Yeah. It sounds a lot better, and that's kind of what we had in mind when we cut the record is uh, to to put it on vinyl eventually. And uh, yeah, it's the Crow Wings. And, mm -hmm. and you um, really seem to have really strong ties to um, South Minneapolis. Tell us about that. Tell us about growing up in South Minneapolis and kind of why you you love South Minneapolis and still feel that's kind of where your heart is. Yeah, well, um, I travel and 
I've lived in Chicago, California, New York, and I all seem to go back to Minneapolis, you know, where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. <laughs> um, and the snow is deep, um, but I don't mind, you know, the snow. I mean, just wear a big jacket and it keeps the um, really bad people away, you know, the bad weather. They keep, you know, they stay down in LA. <laughs> But yeah, I love Minneapolis. I was born and raised in Minneapolis and uh, um, has a great music scene and, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be from, from the hood, inner city streets, inner city boy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Right. And well, thanks for talking about yeah, my art. Yeah, and the best of luck to you. Uh, on your new project with the Crow Wings in 2018. Thank you.